Chapter 9, Zooming Speedy Fast. I like running inside the school. It's funner than running inside your house. In school, you can zoom with your arms out like a jet plane, and you don't knock over the furniture, and also the head doesn't get broken off your mother's bird statue, which used to be a blue jay, I think. I zoom straight to the cafeteria, because there's a lot of tables to hide under in that place. Only when I tried to open the door, it was all locked up. And so then I ran to another room across the hall. Only that stupid door was locked too. Hey, who did all this dumb locking? I asked. Then I started jiggling up and down. Because I was having a little bit of a problem, that's why. The kind of problem that's called personal. And so it's about going to the potty. And so all of a sudden, I had to run down the hall, speedy quick, right to the girls' bathroom. Only guess what? When I got there, that stupid door wouldn't open either. And so I kicked it, and I hanged on it on the door handle, because I weighed 37. Open up, and I mean it, I yelled. But the door kept on staying shut. It's emergency, I shouted. And then all of a sudden, I remembered about the boy I can beat up, because he had an emergency too. And he got to go into the boys' bathroom. And so I zoomed across the hall. And I pulled on the boys' bathroom door. But that dumb thing was locked, too. Stupid, stupid doors, I hollered. After that, I started to jiggle up and down very fast. Oh, no. Now I'm going to have an accident on my skirt that looks like velvet. Only just then I remembered something else about emergencies. Because Mother told me what to do if I ever needed help. And its name is Call 911. And so then I ran back to the dangerous nurse's office because that's where the phone was, of course. And then I picked it up, and I pushed the nine, and the one, and another one. Help! This is an emergency! I yelled. All the doors are locked in this place, and now I'm going to have a terrible accident. Then I heard a voice on the other end. She said for me to calm down. Yeah, only I can't, because I'm in big trouble, and I'm all by myself, and I need help real bad. Then the lady said to calm down again, except for I couldn't stand still. And so I just hung up and ran right out of there. And I just kept on running and running till I got to the big doors at the end of the hall. And then I run right outside because maybe there's, there might be a little toilet out there or something. Except I didn't see one. All I could hear was sirens. Loud sirens were all over the place. And they kept on getting closer and closer. And then a big green fire truck came zooming right around the corner. And a white police car. And a fast red ambulance. And guess what else? They turned right into the school parking lot. And so I stopped jiggling for a second, and I sniffed the air, only I couldn't smell any smoke. Then I heard a grouchy voice. Hey, hold it, Missy, it yelled, and I got very scared inside, because my, Missy's my name when I'm in trouble. I turned around, and it was the man with the can, and he was running at me. Hold it right there, he hollered again, and then I started to cry. Yeah, only that's the trouble, I can't hold it, I said. I already holded it all I can, and now I'm having an emergency, and the bathrooms are locked, and now I'm going to have an accident very quick. And then the man with the can didn't look so grouchy anymore. Well, why didn't you say so, sis? He said. Then he pulled a big bunch of keys out of his pocket, and he grabbed my hand, and then him and me zoomed back into the school, speedy fast. Chapter 10, Me and That Grace. The man with the can unlocked the girl's bathroom for me, and I ran right in there. And guess what? I made it. That's what. I didn't have an accident on my skirt that looks like velvet. Woo! That was a close one, I said. Then I washed my hands at the sink, and I looked in the mirror, and the gold star was still on my forehead. It looked very beautiful up there. After that, I went into the hall, and the man with the can bended down to me. Everything okay, sis? He said. And so I nodded my head. I holded it, I said very happy. Then all of a sudden, there were lots of people running at us. There were firemen and policemen, and there was a tall lady rolling a bed on wheels. Hey, I said to the man with the can, what happened? Did somebody get run over in here or something? Then I saw Mrs. and Principal and Mother. They were running at us, too. And then Mother bended down and hugged me very tight. After that, everyone started talking at once, and nobody was using their quiet voices, and nobody was smiling either. Principal started talking. Principal started asking me a jillion questions. Mostly, they were questions about hiding in the supply closet. I'm a good hider, I told him. Principal acted a little grumpy. He said I wasn't allowed to do that anymore. 
When you go to school, you have to follow the rules, he said. That, what would happen if every boy and girl hid in the supply closet after school? It would be very smushy in there, I said. Then he made his eyes frown. But we wouldn't know where anyone was, would we? He said. Yes, I said. We would all be in the supply closet. Then Principal looked up at the ceiling, and I looked up too, but I didn't see anything again. After, the, after that, Mother looked at my band-aids. Did you hurt yourself? She asked. And so I told her all about the dangerous nurse's office, and then I showed her the nurse's purple sweater, and she made me give it back. After that, everybody started leaving, the firemen and the policemen, and also the tall lady with the bed. Then finally, my mother got to take me home. And guess what? I didn't have to ride on the stupid smelly bus. Except the car wasn't that fun, because Mother was grouchy at me. I'm sorry the bus wasn't fun for you, Junie B, she said. But what you did was very, very wrong. Didn't you see all the commotion you caused? You had a lot of people very scared. Yes, but I didn't want some chocolate milk poured on my head, I explained to her. That's not going to happen, growled Mother. And you can't just suddenly decide for yourself not to ride the bus. Hundreds of kids ride buses every day. And if they can do it, you can do it too. Then my eyes got wet again. Yeah, but there's meanies on that thing, I said all sniffly. Then Mother stopped being so growly. What if you had a friend to ride with, she said. Your teacher told me there's a girl in your class who will be, who will be riding the bus for the very first time tomorrow. Maybe you could sit together. Would you like that? I made my shoulders go up and down. Her name is Grace, said Mother. Grace, I said. Hey, I know that Grace. I learned her today. And so when we got home, Mother called that Grace's mother, and then they talked. And then me and that Grace talked, too. I said hi, and she said hi, and she said she would sit with me. And so tomorrow, I get to take my little red purse on the bus, and I get to put it on the seat next to me so nobody will sit there. Nobody except for that Grace, of course. And then she and me might get to be buddies. And we can hold hands, just like me and Lucille. I would like that, I think. And guess what else? Tomorrow, I think I might like a yellow little... I, I think I might like yellow a little bit, too. The end. Thanks for listening. Please remember to hit like and subscribe. Thank you.